Congratulations on this wonderful film. Thank you. Your first acting role. Yeah, that's my first time. Amazing job. Thank you. Yes. Speaking from the programming perspective, um, this film was a revelation for us. Um, just to sort of give you complete transparency into um, what I do for Outfest. Um, we receive around 1,500 submissions for the festival every year. Um, roughly 10% of those films have trans leads, and the bulk of those are documentaries. So it's very rare to find um, narrative content, and it's very rare to find narrative content with trans men in the lead roles. So um, this really spoke to me. I'm, I'm always trying to curate as inclusive a lineup for the festival as possible, and when I found this, I was like, this is going in boys' shorts, I want everyone to see it. Um, and so you were able to participate in the Q&A for that um, yesterday, I think. Um, the film is based on a, on a novel, a really spectacular novel of the same name. Oh, no, Heidegger Stairwell. Yeah, Heidegger Stairwell is the, Stairwell is the novel. Is the novel. Um, tell us how it came to you. How were you offered this role? Uh, it was kind of an accident. I was talking to my friend who is actually an actor and I was telling him that I'm like kind of interested in getting into acting. It was something I was into when I was a kid and then, you know, you figure out you're trans, you're like, I don't want anyone to look at me. So then once you, like I became comfortable with the way I look, I was like, maybe I'll revisit this. So I was talking to my friend and then literally the next day he sent me this open casting call for the film. Um, and the self-tape was due that night, and I was at work. I work at this small queer bar in Toronto called The Beaver. And um, I was working alone, and one of my coworkers happened to be like there drinking at the bar, so I made them like work while I went and did a self-tape in the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I sent off this self-tape, which wasn't like an audition, it was really just talking about myself and about some music that was important to me, that's what they wanted to know. And uh, I sent it off, and I didn't hear anything back for a long time, like six weeks, so I was like, oh, thank God, I don't have to do that. <laughs> um, and then eventually I got in contact, uh, the director, Chandler, contacted me saying she wanted to meet up for a drink, so I read the novel that this is based off of, just to sort of know more about the story. And yeah, just went from there. And how did you approach this being your first role? How did you get into character or access the, the character that, that you were given? Um, well, I kind of just had to fake it. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. And um, well, they, the like production was very, the producers were very helpful and they hooked me up with some acting coaches so I could have like a bit of training, but really, I just had to find myself in the character and make myself feel what the character was feeling so that you don't really have to act, you can just, it's just happening, I guess. You did an amazing job. Oh, thank you. Tell us about the rest of the team. Um, so the director is Sis, correct? Yes. And were there any other trans It was just me. Okay. So yeah. how was that? Uh, it was a lot of work. And I basically became a consultant and a writer and doing a lot of emotional labor and telling people when things are problematic and like it was it was exhausting um, and it, it did take a toll on me and in the end like I'm really happy that this is a project and a film that I feel good standing behind because of that work that I put in but I think that's like a huge, like it's a really important thing to think about when making films and telling trans stories is that it's not just enough to have a trans actor playing a trans role, like you have to have more trans people involved, like you have to have consultants and writers and people who like actually know what they're talking about and what the story means and so it can be authentic and you're not just like wringing everything out of this one person yeah. or potentially like i even feel lucky because they were listening to me and they wanted to make something that was good i was just the only person available to help them with that so i'm sure there are many situations where there are trans actors who are acting in these roles that are problematic and they are probably trying to change things and no one is listening to them you know so 
that you find yourself having to change lines of dialogue and things like that? Yeah. Yeah, like a lot. There is a lot of <laughs> a lot of script editing. It'd be like, okay, like we have to change this one thing, and be like, okay, 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 and then it's like, oh, there's a new thing now. Um, <laughs> but I mean, overall, it was an amazing experience. But it was just, it was a lot of work. Yeah. And I can't imagine a better platform for your first film to world premiere at TIFF, the Toronto. Yeah, Campus that was pretty really crazy. So. Talk us through from there, which was September of last year, to now. Obviously, you've been looking for more acting work, I would imagine. I, yeah, I've been looking. I haven't found anything. But um, it's been an amazing year. I've been able to go to a few festivals. I mean, I went to TIFF because I live in Toronto. I went to New York for New, New Fest, which is where I met you. It was amazing. Um, and South by Southwest. And so I've been meeting a lot of filmmakers and a lot of actors and, and all these amazing people, which has been such an incredible experience. Um, and I'm sad that it's all kind of like potentially coming to an end now, but. But hopefully you've been collecting potential collaborators along the yeah, way. Yeah, like I've made so many friends and, and I, yeah, I've like met a lot of people that I would like to work with and who I feel like would want to support me, which is nice. So if, if the scripts aren't necessarily being offered to you right now, does that mean you're willing to put on the I'm right hat and create your own? I'm just going to have to do it myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> after working on this and like the amount of work that I put into it, like especially with the script writing, I was like, oh, you know what? Like maybe I can actually just do this um, and be in control and not have to like change something that's problematic into something that's good, uh, instead just like start with something good. Mm -hmm. I guess. So what is your dream role? My dream role? Like as an actor? I don't know, like an action comedy? <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. You'd be amazing. <laughs> Do we have any questions in the audience for Jesse? Yes, back here. Alright, so for most of the story it seems like Evan wants something from Lou which makes sense because I think it's implied at least to me that Lou and Evan used to be in a relationship. Um, and everyone in the band seems to be very receptive towards Evan, except for Isis. Why do you think that is? Well, she's a bit of a turf, Isis. Uh, Did he, is that, does everyone know what that means? Transclusionary yes. radical feminist? She's like a lesbian. She's like a Michigan Women's Festival, like <laughs> trans women don't belong here type. So that's kind of the backstory there, is they've always had this headbutting situation because basically she's transphobic. Mm. Which you can, like, if you want to read the book, you can, just like a lot of, the book's not written by a trans person either, so, you know, at your discretion, <laughs> read the book. There was a question back here. Yes, go ahead. Um, the, the scene, like, right after that outside where he's like, so is, are you saying that I lost my virginity to a man? Is that in the book? It's so bright because it's so I wrote that line. Yeah, that was my favorite scene to shoot with Dove Tiefenbach, who's like such an amazing person and actor. And it was really, we really just kind of, like we talked about it before and I was like, maybe like, and the director was open to us doing improv. Um, so yeah, the line before that was, uh, it was something really awkward, like, I'm like the guy you lost your virginity to, like, it was something so weird. He was like, I don't want to say this. And I was like, I don't think you should say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we kind of, like, I suggested that line. And then, like, we did that scene over and over again. And it was so fun. And we were just, like, laughing a lot and kind of just working off of each other. Um, and I think you can, you can see that. It feels natural. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There's a question back here. Go ahead. Yeah. What was um, the pitch from Chandler on why she wanted to tell the story and why she felt um, the ability to Well, this story? Chandler uh, was asked to do this project by the producers, um, Motel Pictures. Uh, they got a like Bravo Fact grant, which is like a huge grant in Canada 
to do a short film, and I think Nicole, uh, the producer, had just read the book and fell in love with the story, and she wanted to like have, I think, an up-and-coming woman director in Toronto do it, so she asked Chandler to do it, um, and I mean, people want to work, so <laughs> I think that's the gist of it. Perhaps if that opportunity came her way again, she might approach it slightly differently in a more collaborative way. I think so. You know, Chandler is like a, a great person, and I never felt like I had to like be easy with her. I was very honest with her, and like we had a, like a mutual respect, and she was open to being like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so like we we did like we are still friends and we had a great relationship. It was just like you know sometimes you have those friends that are like they're hard. <laughs> I've got a bunch of questions for you. Yes, go ahead right here in the center. Yes. Um, what's the, the? Yeah, you may or may not know the answer. But what's is there a background on that last music uh, band playing? Yeah. What's the story of that? So. There's this like pretty famous Canadian band called The Deers. I'm sure you haven't heard of them. <laughs> uh, and uh, one of the guys from The Deers, his name's Murray. I can't remember his last name. He wrote the song uh, for the film. And most of the actors are real musicians, so they perform the song uh, themselves. And he kind of taught them to be a band and like what the band dynamic should look like. Um, and that's really where like Chandler's vision came in for the film. Like she had directed a lot of music videos, and she was a what's it called? Like a music journalist. So that was really like her uh, creativity for the film was like the music aspect, and uh, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Yes, in the back, go ahead. Uh, so representations of trans men. Um, who do I like? I like, I mean, I can't think of any trans men in the media that I don't like. I just want to see more. Like, I, I don't care what kind it is. I just want more, I think. Good answer, yeah. Mm, yeah, queer queer film festivals are definitely the best. You know, like <laughs> no one cared to ask me questions at TIFF or South by. Like I feel like TIFF is like um, I I think I blacked out for that. You know, like, that was like my first one. I can't remember. And then South by Southwest is like a very it's like a filmmakers festival. So all the questions are for like the directors and the writers and the producers. So I don't think I spoke at all really. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. They liked it, <laughs> but I I think people were people were more interested in like oh it's beautifully shot, it's like well made, it's a good story uh, rather than the the trans aspect of it, which I think is fine. You know, like I it would be great to get to a place where it's like all trans movies aren't just about transness. You know, it's just like a facet of the project and. People can say other things about it. I have a question in the front. You said that you had to rewrite some problematic dialogue. Can you give an example of something? Oh, I don't think I should <laughs> really get into it. And I don't think I can remember specifically. Like, I think it was just more like kind of cliche, you know? Like someone who had... Um, and there were two writers, it wasn't just Chandler, there was another writer too, but just people who don't actually have any access to even the queer community, never mind the trans community, just kind of uh, writing a character based on like, you know, what they think that would look like. So just like played out storylines of like trans character being like deceptive and like a huge emphasis on like the before and after of mm -hmm. what they look like. I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm so, that's one thing I wanted to say. It was so nice seeing a film that 
that focused on the human aspect of the trans person and not on the physical transition. Yeah. <laughs> and there was going to be. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm saying, I'm so grateful. Yeah, you ended, and we were just, we got to know you as a human being. You know, beyond. I mean, it, that's such a small part. I'm trans, and that's such a small part of the experience. And yeah. You know, they don't talk about the social, the psych, the emotional, all the stuff. A part of being part of the human race, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, and that's what I hope people in this audience will start to look at and address on, on the screen with trans guys. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely agree. So, given that you have, you know, attended some other screenings and were not participating in the Q and A's or not called upon as, as much as some of the other team members, is there anything else that you would like to share? with us here. But I think I said a lot already. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, if you have money, give money to trans people who are artists. Like, help them out. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to be able to introduce Jesse to all of you and uh, hopefully you'll come out of here with a lot of new friends and yeah. agent and manager contacts and script offers and I'm just, <laughs> I'm all about team Jesse right here. So thank you for oh, being thank here. Thank you so much. <laughs> So we have, uh, we have another film for you now. We're going to watch Burton Before and After.